I'm gonna be getting back on the spanners now. So it probably won't be long enough to go to here. Drain the cooler now. And some of it went into the bowl. And it was immediately apparent that there was a bit of an issue. I'm gonna cut along here. Died, even though there was still power in the battery. And then I found my tin snips. Well, it looks an absolute eyesore. The top hose was a little bit short. Hello and welcome to this video. I'm Marcus Hayes and in this video I'm going to be getting back on the spanners because I've got something that I want to fit to Maud, my Maud or Mark II Escort, before I take her to a car meet in a few days, which is set to be an awesome car meet judging by the groups that have said that they're going to attend. I will be going up there with the West London Classic Ford crew of course. Now before we get into that, I want to have a bit of a catch up with you guys. Got a couple of things to announce in terms of my future plans. And uh, yeah, we just have a quick chit chat. So I'll meet you in my living room now. Right, so first of all, I want to let you know about a couple of club stands that I'm planning to have this year. I have mentioned these on my social media, but for any of you guys that aren't following me on there, I'm going to be having club stands again this year at the Classic Ford Show at the South of England Showground, which is on the 14th of May, and also at the Ford Show at Santapod, which is on July the 16th. So if any of you guys want to join me on either of those stands, just drop me an email to marcushayesuk at gmail.com. Please put in the subject of the email either club stands or Ford Show club stand or classic Ford show club stand so that your emails are easier for me to spot and I'll send you details of how you can apply to get on my club stands. Unlike some of the clubs, I'm not going to be snobby about you know who I want on my stands. At the end of the day, if you've got a Ford, then you're welcome on my club stand. The club stands at last year's shows were awesome, you know, a wide variety of cars and it's just a good way of getting all you guys in the same spot as me at these shows and um, yeah, we can have a chat. Obviously, I'll be filming the cars that are on my club stands. There'll be merch on sale for any of you guys that want to grab some of that without worrying about the postage costs and stuff. But yeah, it was awesome last year and I'm looking forward to seeing as many of you as possible on my stands again this year. So drop me an email and I'll send you the details. On the subject of shows, I will be heading over to County Fermanagh in Northern Ireland again for the Summit Show and Run this year. And that's being held on the 5th and the 6th of August. We've already booked a ferry. We've already booked our hotel. So yeah, really, really looking forward to getting back over to Northern Ireland. The following over there for Classic Fords, in particular rally cars, and the, you know, the people that follow me is immense. And yeah, we always get treated like royalty over there, you know, the famous Irish hospitality. So yeah, really, really looking forward to the summit this year in August. Now, another thing I wanna let you guys know about is something that I've added to my website, and my website has had a little bit of a revamp. So yeah, go and check out my website if you haven't already. It's marcushayesuk.com. There's blog posts on there that I post regularly, and that's the only place where you can get official Marcus Hayes merchandise from as well. But one thing I've added to there is a classified ad section. Now at the moment, I've got a couple of parts on that page that I've got for sale. The boot and bonnet that I recently removed from Maud, and the chrome trims for a four-door Mark II Escort that came with Heidi, my other model Mark II Escort. So yeah, go and check those out if you're in the market for any of those parts. But um, if there's anyone out there that feels they could benefit from advertising their parts or cars for sale on my classified ads page, then yeah, head over to my website. You'll see there's a message at the top of that page just saying to email me basically, and um, I'll let you know all about that. But you know, the way I see it is that the only real places you can sell parts and stuff 
the only good places anyway are eBay and Facebook Marketplace. And both of those platforms, you know, have their their cons, you know. For instance, eBay, they want to charge you for listing the items and then they want to take 12.5% off of the sale price as well. And, you know, if, if they don't want you to contact each other, you know, buyer and seller, and if they detect that you have been doing that, they charge you 12.5% um, even if your item hasn't sold. So, yeah, it's a, eBay's a bit Nazi, if you ask me. But, yeah, there's none of that with advertising your stuff on my website. I'm quite happy for you to list multiple parts, you know, in one listing. You know, I'm quite happy for you to have... 20 pictures on your listing if you go over to the page you'll see that basically on the page there's one picture which is like the main picture then you click into it and then you know if you want 20 photos in there that's fine and yeah as i say you can list multiple parts in one listing whereas ebay don't like you to do that they want to charge you a listing for each part and then even if you are sort of breaking a car for spares you have to sort of list it as if you're selling a wheel nut i don't need to know your phone number i don't need to know your email address um, whereas you know ebay obviously want to know loads of details about you it's up to you you know what details you put on your advert you know so that people can contact you obviously um if they want to buy your parts one thing i've noticed with a lot of the facebook groups um i've never sold anything on marketplace to be honest but on the Facebook groups, you know, people will put parts up and they're just asking for offers, you know, because they don't know how much things cost, you know. Um, I've done that myself when I've sort of mentioned to you guys on the channel, you know, I've got these parts for sale open to offers. And yeah, it just seems like a lot of Facebook groups don't, you know, you know, you can't list stuff on here unless you've got a price. Well, there's none of that on my classified ads. If you just want to put it up, you know, asking for offers, that's totally fine. If you want to put a price, that's totally fine. And yeah, as I've already mentioned, you know, I, I don't want to get involved in the money side of things. If, you know, I'm not going to be taking a cut out of your sales, there will be a fee to list your advert but that's it. And what I'm also going to do is it'll be a monthly, a rolling monthly thing. And basically every month as part of, you know, listing on my classified ads page, I'll also be posting on my Facebook and my Instagram just as a added bonus. So yeah, if any of you guys think that that could be helpful with you, any of you that are selling cars or parts, drop me an email and I'll send you the information for that. But yeah, I think that's enough in terms of this little catch up. So I'll see you around at Maud's Garage, which will be tomorrow for me, but for you, it will be now. All right, so it's actually been two days since the last clip because yesterday I realized that I needed to buy some bits to enable me to fit what I'm planning to fit today, which is this alloy radiator. Now, if you've been watching my recent videos, you'll remember when I went to visit Lee to check out his Cosy YB powered Mark One Escort that I actually got a passenger ride in. Also, he showed us his ST170 powered Mark II Escort. We actually played around with the settings on the ME221 ECU to get that car running that day. And don't forget, if you're after an ECU, I'm now a dealer of Motorsport Electronics ECUs, which you're able to order through my website at marcushayesuk.com. I'll leave a link to my website in the description but yeah also as well as the two escorts lee showed us his ztec turbo powered kit car which i think was a, a locust kit car had a uh, jps livery really cool he's actually been in touch since to say that that thing's now up and running so i'll be going back for a passenger ride in that car very soon but yeah when we went to visit lee he very kindly gave me a load of parts including this alloy radiator which has already got a fan attached which is really handy the wiring is slightly different than you know the wiring plug is slightly different than what i've got in the car but that's not a massive issue and Lee also made up these pipes. So instead of running, you know, silicone pipes all the way from the radiator to the water pump at the bottom and from the radiator to the water rail at the top, you have little bits of rubber hose and then you have this metal piece. I'm probably not gonna fit the top hose um, metal today, um, but yeah, I'll definitely be 
trying to fit this because this radiator has both the inlet and outlet on the same side, whereas the standard cross-flow radiator that's fitted to Maud at the moment has this one over this side. So the rubber hoses that fit to the car won't suit this radiator. So yeah, definitely gonna be bunging this on. Another really cool thing about this is that Lee's actually put this bung on it. So, you know, when that's fitted to the car and you ever need to drain the coolant, you literally just take that bolt out and you can drain it into a bottle rather than having to disconnect the hose from the radiator. One thing I wasn't able to get yesterday is a fitting to screw into here with a barb on the end of it so that I can hook up the hose that goes from here to the heater or from the heater to here, should I say. And speaking of that bit of hose, I actually picked up this length of hose yesterday because the hose that's on the car at the moment sort of comes to about here so it probably won't be long enough to go to over here where it needs to be so yeah gonna chuck this rad in mode today also picked up some brand new jubilee clips to make life easy and got this bowl to drain the coolant because i'm actually going to try and save the coolant rather than wasting it like i do every time i normally drain the radiator now one thing i remember today that i need to replace on this engine is this alternator belt which is really worn out i noticed this was really worn when i was at the drift day recently at some point on this belt there's actually like a nick out of it so yeah we don't want that snapping because then that will mean not only the battery won't be getting charged because the alternator won't be spinning but this belt also drives the water pump so it will inevitably mean that the engine will overheat see i could have picked up one of those belts yesterday when i went to the shop to pick up that hose and stuff but luckily my beautiful girlfriend cat is out shopping today quite local to that parts place so she's going to pick me up an alternator belt today but for now i'm going to concentrate on replacing this radiator quite a simple job shouldn't cause me any issues at all I shouldn't have said that after jacking Maud up and putting her on axle stands I then cut the cable ties that were holding the bottom radiator hose to the anti-roll bar and then I disconnected the bottom radiator hose from the radiator to drain the coolant out and some of it went into the bowl. I then disconnected the top radiator hose from the radiator and then set about removing the radiator from the car. I had one cable tie to cut at the bottom of the radiator on the driver's side and then I remembered to disconnect the negative terminal on the battery and then I removed one nut and bolt from either side of the top of the radiator. I disconnected the wiring for the electric fan for lifting the radiator completely out of the way. With the old radiator removed, I could then trial fit the new alloy radiator and it was immediately apparent that there was a bit of an issue. All right, so I've hit a stumbling block and it's one that I should have seen coming, to be honest. Because this radiator is very tall and because Maud has the non-RS front cross member piece here, the radiator isn't able to go down low enough. Now, the proper way to solve this is to buy an RS style um, front cross member or just cut out a piece and put like a right angled piece in there so you end up with you know a recess for it but i don't have a welder here and i don't have a panel to weld in but i do have a battery powered angle grinder here so i think what i am going to do is i'm going to cut along here maybe cut a slit there and the same the other side and then i should be able to just bash this bit in to give clearance for the radiator. I highly recommend if any of you guys want to fit a big radiator to your Mark II Escort, you buy the panel and weld it in properly. The angle grinder lasted literally a couple of minutes before it died, even though there was still power in the battery. So I resorted to a big hammer and chisel, and my chisels were all blunt. And then I found my tin snips. So I hacked away at the panel And then I used various bits of wood and the handle for my jack to lever the opposing panel out of the way. All right, well, it looks an absolute eyesore, but there is now enough clearance for the radiator to fit. I need to um, tie these wires up. Um, I had them cable tied to this bit before. Um, I think I had it going through these holes here and then through these slots but they'll probably be in the way of the rad now. 
Um, so I need to drill some more holes down the bottom here and just cable tie them. But I don't have my drill here for some reason, which is really strange because I bought another drill and another um, impact gun just so that I had them here and at my other garage. But yeah, the radiator will now fit. I need to figure out you know, how high exactly it's going to sit um, just so that the hose is uh, you know, at an ideal sort of angle. I've got various holes in these support pieces. So I've got choices in terms of how high to run the rad without having to drill more holes in the rad itself. So yeah, this has already been way more hassle than I was expecting. I knew I shouldn't have said earlier that it wasn't gonna cause me any trouble, but yeah, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel now. So let's get this rad in. Before I set about actually bolting the radiator in, I went to double check that the fan was working correctly, which it was. And I wanted to trial fit the top and bottom hoses to work out how high I wanted to actually mount the radiator. The top hose was a little bit short, so I undone it at the water rail end, pulled it towards the radiator, and done the Jubilee clip back up. So that was fine. Here you can see the piece of hose that I've been using as a reducer to make sure that the top hose is tight on the radiator. Here I'm disconnecting the other end of the old bottom radiator hose from the water pump and then I was able to pull the bottom radiator hose out of the way but at this stage it was still connected to the hose running to the heater. I trial fitted the bottom radiator pipe arrangement that Lee made and it was clear that it was going to fit absolutely perfectly so I then set about bolting the radiator in properly with the same nuts and bolts that were holding the old radiator in. Next I added an electrical connector to suit the electric fan so that, that could be plugged in, tightened up all the Jubilee clips for the top and bottom radiator hoses and then it was time to replace the coolant hose that goes from the heater in the car to the bottom radiator pipe. On moored that heater hose is in two pieces so there's just a hose joiner just underneath the bike carbs so with one Jubilee clip loosened I was able to fully remove the hose which was still of course attached to the old bottom radiator hose and here you can see the hose joiner that it was connected to then I could feed the new hose in and I just hooked it up to the bottom radiator pipe with a Jubilee clip but I will be getting a proper fitting to improve this end of that hose Next, I fed the other end of that hose underneath the bike carbs so that I could then mark it, pull it back out to cut it to length before feeding it underneath the bike carbs and hooking it back up to that hose joiner with a brand new Jubilee clip. My beautiful girlfriend dropped me off a new alternator belt so I set about releasing the tension on the old alternator belt so that I could remove it and then it was just a case of fitting the new alternator belt and tensioning it all back up again. With the old coolant poured into the new radiator, well most of it anyway, and then topped up with some new coolant and some water, job was done. All right, so the radiator is in, definitely looks the part, and you can see the uh, bottom radiator pipe hooked up there. I was actually looking at this top pipe that Lee made, and I'm not 100% sure whether it's gonna work, um, because of this angle. I think if it is gonna work, this is gonna to have to be sort of, you know, going below there and it might end up hitting this pulley. Um, I'm definitely gonna need some more sort of straight hose um, because yeah, that will that will sit there and yeah, that's right on the bend of this hose. And yeah, same again here. So I think it'd be better off with a couple of bits of straight hose about this long and then I'll be able to see if this will be out of work. It'll definitely look better if I can get this to work. But yeah, the rad's in. I actually didn't have to put any cable ties or bolts um, at the bottom of the rad. Yeah, nice and solid with just the two bolts. You'll notice that this rad has the fan on the back instead of the front, which is actually better because then the fan isn't restricting airflow getting to the rad um, in normal driving. But to be honest, this car does overcool a bit, or it did with the South African rad um, in the winter. And I'm sure this rad is gonna be even more efficient than that. So in the winter, I might end up having to put a bit of cardboard in front of the rad, which isn't a big deal. Of course, got the new alternator belt on, which my beautiful girlfriend picked up for me. So um, yeah, I'm about ready for a first start.
All right, so the fan on the alternator is rubbing on this bracket. Um, so yeah, I need to rearrange this. With this setup, you've got this uh, idler pulley that adjusts the tension as well as this alternator bracket so you can sort of manipulate whereabouts the belt is. Obviously, I was trying to keep it away from this bracket because I assume it was rubbing before. I actually have ground a bit of the material away there to prevent it. But um, yeah, I need to drop that down slightly and then tighten it up a bit more on this. So I'll rearrange it and then uh, we'll go for another fire up. Well, that's a bit better. No more weird noises coming from the alternator. Hopefully that's not gonna keep hitting that bracket. I might have to shave a little bit more off of that at some point. But yeah, I'm gonna leave it running for a bit with the cap off, um, at least until the thermostat opens. Just get things circulating. I'm gonna make sure there's no leaks anywhere from any of the joints. But yeah, can't see any leaks so far. All looks good. I still do need to refit the grill. I, I took that out of the way just to make it easier for me to get in there to do my bodge up um, radiator clearance job. But yeah, hopefully all will be well. I'll just bung the grill back on, tidy my tools, and then uh, I think I'm gonna go and get something to eat, and then I'm gonna take this thing for a rip. Well, the radiator didn't have any leaks, which is unusual. Normally when I do a job like this, I have to nip up a couple of the Jubilees, but yeah totally fine i let it run for a good while while it was jacked up with the radiator cap off just to bleed out any air bubbles and um yeah everything's sweet now i was hoping to go for a really long drive but i forgot me and my beautiful girlfriend i've got to go to the airport today to pick up some of her relatives uh, come over from Italy and uh, yeah I said I'd go with her so This thing definitely needs some new rear tyres. They're still just about legal, but yeah, they've had too many heat cycles. They're um, fun. <laughs> but yeah, I need to get this thing back in the garage and get myself home so that we can uh, make our way to the airport. Now, I want to send a massive, massive thanks out to Lee for sorting out this radiator. I really, really appreciate it. He actually gave me some other parts that day, uh, one of which is a catch can. I'll need to fit that soon to get rid of the Halfords coolant bottle that I'm using at the moment as a catch can. But yeah, really, really cool to get back out in this thing. Definitely need to get an alignment as well. It's, um, yeah, it's not as, uh, not as fun to drive when, you know, the alignment isn't um, bang on. But um, yeah, I love this thing. I love how I can just kick its head in without feeling guilty. You know, the job I did today, I'm not a fabricator by any stretch of the imagination, but you know, a car like this, if I need to cut things in a ghetto way to make radiators fit, I can do. And um, yeah, I love having a, a ratty Escort, as well as obviously Esther, my slightly more mint one. <laughs> and um, yeah, I'll definitely be uh, 
pulling my finger out with her pretty soon. I'm probably going to leave it another month and then I'll be getting her back together. Got a couple of little jobs I want to do before I get her back together and then I need to see about getting her tuned up because she hasn't been tuned since we fitted the AL development cylinder head. So that's all I've got for this video. Tomorrow I'll be taking this car to an awesome car meet at Box Hill with the West London Classic Ford crew. So stay tuned to the channel for the next video, which will be the video that I'll be making at the meet tomorrow. But yeah, if you thought this video was any good, please do give it a thumbs up and a share. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Click subscribe and activate the notification bell if you're new to be kept up to date with all future uploads. For official Marcus Hayes merchandise or parts, check out my website. Feel free to follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. All the links to that will be in the description as usual. Massive, massive thanks to all my patrons for your ongoing support. And as always, I'll leave my email address in the description for anyone who wants to contact me. But other than that, until next time, thanks for watching.